It seems every time I put together some kind of interesting CPU or GPU gaming type video, the comments section quickly fills up with requests for Q6600 testing. For those of you who don't know or have simply forgotten the Core 2 Quad Q6600, it's an almost 10 year old Kensfield 65 nanometer processor which, as the name suggests, boasts 4 cores. Kensfield was Intel's first ever quad core architecture and the Q6600 was the company's first mainstream offering at a cool $530 US upon release. Out of the box it operated all four cores at 2.4GHz and ran on 266MHz frontside bus. Ah, the good old days. As Intel's first mainstream quad core processor, the Q6600 was incredibly popular and the fact that almost a decade later so many of you are asking for modern benchmarks using it is a testament to this. Therefore, I decided to do some secondhand shopping and pick up a Q6600 system for as little as possible for a round of benchmarking. Looking on eBay didn't prove particularly useful as Australians selling here seem to think their crusty old dust infested Q6600 systems are increasing in value as they age. Despite my best Michael Catton impression, telling their dreaming didn't seem to help, so I moved on. Checking local computer forums is where I had the most success, and having just missed out on a few Q6600 rigs that sold for less than 30 Aussie dollars, I landed on a real gem. For 40 Australian dollars, which is roughly 30 US, I managed to land a Core 2 Quad Q9300 system with 4GB of memory, decent power supply, case, mechanical storage, and an old GeForce GTX 560 Ti graphics card. The Q9300 is a decent step up from the Q6600 as well. This 45 nanometer part, codenamed Yorkfield 6M, runs on a faster 333 MHz frontside bus, so out of the box it offers a bit more of a punch. It can also be overclocked to over 3 GHz, which is handy for netting a bit of extra performance. What I wanted to know was is it even worth investing the time it takes to not only locate one of these old systems at a fair price, but then set it up and of course use it. If all you plan on doing is playing games such as League of Legends that will run on a potato, then yes, I suspect the investment will be worth it. But what if you have expectations of playing more recent, more demanding titles such as Overwatch and even Star Wars Battlefront for example? Can an old Coral 2 quad system offer you anything? This is what I wanted to find out, so I picked up half a dozen popular games including Star Wars Battlefront, League of Legends, Overwatch, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Dota 2 and the ever popular Rocket League. The Core 2 Quad Q9300 system with the GeForce GTX 560 Ti was tested in the condition I received it in to see what kind of results were achievable without any upgrades. The GTX 560 Ti was then swapped out for the recently released Radeon RX 460 to see what kind of headroom there was in the processor. In order to do that, we also overclocked the Q9300 to 3.25GHz to see how hard it could push the RX 460. Finally, for comparison's sake, I ran the same games using the same settings on the RX 460 with it installed on my Core i3 and Core i7 test rigs. I thought this might provide an interesting insight to see how this almost 10 year old quad core compares to Intel's current range. So with that said, let's get on with it. First up, let's get League of Legends out of the way. I know this is an insanely popular video game, but let's face it, the game runs on pretty much anything. Proving this, we find a very playable 49 FPS average on the Q9300 rig using the GTX 560 Ti at 1080p using the maximum in-game quality settings. Throwing the RX 460 in didn't really improve performance much. That said, overclocking the Q9300 to 3.25 GHz did boost the performance by almost 30% with the RX 460. When compared to a modern low voltage Core i3 system, the overclock Q9300 only delivered around half the performance, and the Core i7 rig was naturally much faster again. Still, in terms of value for money, it's hard for League of Legends gamers to do better, especially given this isn't a game that needs extreme frame rates. So what about the other massively popular online battle arena game, Dota 2? The GTX 560 Ti did provide playable performance here, if only just. An average of 36 FPS is playable, but we found considerably better performance when using the RX 460. The average frame rate jumped up to 62 FPS, a massive 72% increase. An additional 10% more was also found through overclocking. Again, that's around half the performance of a modern Core i3 system. The Q9300 and GTX 560 Ti combo performed exceptionally well in CSGO. Using the very high quality settings at 1080p along with 8x MSAA, this system has no trouble exceeding 60fps average. That's pretty nuts. Not only that, but arming it with the RX 460 boosted the average frame rate to well over 100 FPS and over 140 FPS once overclocked. Even when compared to the latest and greatest Skylake systems, the Q9300 didn't look too bad here. My personal favourite is Rocket League and I was a bit disappointed with the GTX 560 Ti here. 
Using the performance quality settings with AA Disable, we did average 31 FPS, though constant frame drops made for a laggy experience. Replacing the GeForce graphics card with the RX 460 did wonders for this system, and I was shocked by the performance. Now with averages in excess of 100 FPS, the game is fantastic to play, and most importantly, lag free. I'm not really sure why the GTX 560 Ti was so useless here. Despite a shockingly poor result for the GTX 560 Ti when playing Rocket League, we find rather decent performance in Overwatch. The 44 FPS minimum suggests perfectly smooth performance, though I have to admit the game was at times quite stuttery. Overclocking the Q9300 corrected this, and with the RX 460 it was perfectly smooth. Keep in mind my Overwatch test does feature two full teams of bots, so it is very CPU intensive. So how about a modern AAA title then? Well unfortunately playable performance just wasn't achievable with the Q9300 and GTX 560 Ti combo, even with the low quality settings which I did try. Swapping out the 560 Ti for the RX 460 solved the performance issues and the game jumped up to a playable 46 FPS average. Overclocking the Q9300 boosted performance by a massive 35% and we were now looking at an average of 62 FPS, which wasn't a great deal slower than a Core i3 test system. In fact, with no CPU bottleneck at all, the RX 460 is only capable of 69 FPS. It's been some time since I've gamed on a Core 2 quad system, so if anything, the experience was interesting. For gamers on seriously tight budgets, these old quad-core systems can offer a decent gaming experience, especially if you get lucky with the GPU. How much of a bargain the Core 2 quad computer would be comes down to not only luck, but also the second-hand market in your region. Where you look is also a huge factor. Taking the easy way out and looking on eBay wasn't very successful for me, but you might have more luck. I found local trading posts and computer forums to be by far the best sources for cheap computer parts and systems, so make sure you look around to try and find the best buying options in your part of the world. The Q9300 was surprisingly capable, though the GeForce GTX 560 Ti had its ups and downs. It delivered acceptable performance in games such as Overwatch and League of Legends, while it sucked badly in Battlefront and Rocket League. Arming the Q9300 with the RX 460 solved any performance issues I was having, and it really brought this system to life. Alternatives to the $110 Radeon RX 460 would be something like the R7 260X or even HD 7790. Locally, I've seen GTX 580 and HD 7970 cards selling for as little as $50, so there are certainly some cheap options out there. Of course, if you can land an even faster GPU, then that's even better. Just make sure you overclock the Q9300 processor. On that note, you'll ideally require an aftermarket tower-style CPU cooler if you want to push much past 3GHz on the overclock. In the end, we've taken a good look at how the Core 2 Quad Q9300 handles some of today's most popular games using an old GPU along with the modern budget option. The idea of this video isn't to show you how to purchase such a system for 30 US dollars, but rather inform you that it is possible and this is the resulting performance. The hope is, with a clear indication of the expected performance, you can make a much more informed purchase. Here in Australia we're paying a little over $80 for the Pentium G4400 processor alone, so I feel paying up to 100 bucks for a Core 2 quad system with a decent GPU is still very much worth it. Unfortunately on eBay, prices seem to start around $120 for complete systems, while those with decent GPUs start at around $150. It took me a few weeks of bidding, bartering and begging before I found the right system at the right price, so if that's something you aren't willing to do, then budget secondhand shopping probably isn't the right option for you. What do you guys think of this system? Let me know in the comments. I'm your host Matt as always, and I'll see you guys next time. YouTubers like me depend on your support to continue improving the quality and content of our videos. To support the channel directly, consider becoming a patron to also get access to a heap of cool rewards and exclusive giveaways. Also, don't forget you can check prices and buy the products I looked at in this video through the Amazon links in the video description below. Thank you kindly for supporting me and the Hardware Unbox channel, it means a lot to me and I really do appreciate it, and in return I'll continue to work as hard as I can to keep producing the content you enjoy.